Yo guys, how? what is going on? Welcome back to another preview, Butter vs Kupia, tomorrow, Loftus Road. What is going to happen? Um, let's briefly talk about Kupia before we go fully in depth about Kupia. They've only won one of the last five. They've played some tough teams and got some bad results. They're sitting 14th in the table. Agent Steve McLaren, who we all know from his Newcastle days, and listen, his Borough days as well. But Steve McLaren, for me, will he get a, will he, you know, will the Borough fans give him a good reception tomorrow? Let me know in the comment section. Will we give him a good, I think he deserves one. I, I honestly do, because when you look at what he did, you know what I mean? He took us to win some silverware, which Borough didn't win in 128 years. I know he went to a UEFA Cup final, got beat 4 0, but he still took us there. And then he got the England job, and then he went wherever else he went. But when he was at Butter, he didn't do too badly. And he actually won the Cup. So for me, I feel like tomorrow, Steve McLaren, I feel like he should be maybe he's clapped by the Butter fans because of what he did when he was here. You know what I mean? It was a success. Let's be real. Do you know what I mean? I've Butter won a Carling Cup since he was here. No, have we been where we were? No. Everything else that goes with it. I think he was a success when he was a butter, and I think tomorrow he should get, you know, I think tomorrow he should get maybe a good reception from the butter fans. But that's that's me talking Steve McLaren a butter. He was a legend when he was at Newcastle for many reasons to what he did to that club. So thank you, Agent Steve McLaren, again. And now he's at QPR, where at the start of the season it looked like he was going to get the sack. Everything was going wrong for him. He seemed to have picked up a little bit, and now winning one in the last five, they're not in a good sort of situation. At the minute, table-wise and form-wise, but QPR will be due a win sometime soon, and I think that's what the, I think that's what the players will be going off and the fans will be going off. Thinking, listen, at some point, something's got to give, and we're going to get a result, and we're going to turn the team over. Will they want to do it tomorrow to butter? Will Steve McLaren want to do it tomorrow to butter? All them things sort of weigh up, um, and then obviously you know you look at butter. Well, we are obviously a man down now. More best it suffers with that red card that he got. Apparently it's only a one game ban, so we're kind of lucky in that respect that it isn't free. Although, is it a sort of blessing in disguise? Because let's be real, more Bessage hasn't been great the last couple of games. Also, are we going to see Ashley Fletcher be given another chance on Saturday? As we all know, you know, he played the last game and he got took off after 30 minutes. It wasn't really good for the kid to, you know what I mean, first, first, first start in the championship this season. And he goes off after half an hour. Not great for him. Will he go two up front this Saturday? Because listen, we've seen it in the previous game. He went two up front against Blackburn and Son Balongo scored the goal of the season. I don't think we will see a better goal than that all season, if I'm quite honest with you. The way he ran onto it, the way he bent it round, <sighs> that goal was unbelievable. Will we see a better goal than that this season? I don't know. But it looked like that partnership worked because who was the man that laid it off to put Son Balongo? It was Jordan Hugill. And you might say, oh, well, you know, it's coincidence. But I honestly think that little bit of link up play, that could. That could be a dream this season. That could be the potential that takes Butter further up the table if he plays a two up front instead of playing the one up front. Let's get into it then. Let's get into the preview. Let's talk about, let's talk about QPR. You know, I've already mentioned about them being one win in the last five games. The teams that they actually lost to, because obviously they lost three, drawn one, and won one. That, that you say, you know, uh, the one win came to Brentford at home, 3 2. And that came at the start of the first win, of the, obviously. So when one win and then continuous. The next four games have been no wins. They're drawn to Stoke 2 2 away, which I actually thought was a decent result. And watching that game back when I seen the highlights, I thought QPR played very, 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 very well against uh, Stoke City. And to go there with the team that Stoke have got and get a 2 2 result, it ain't that, you know what I mean? It ain't bad. But the teams have lost two. Hull City at home 3 2, which took me by surprise, I'm quite honest with you, because, you know, ever since, uh, Hull got re ever since Hull got relegated in the Premier League, obviously with Middlesbrough. Everyone thought they'd go straight back up. They never. They sort of went down a little bit and it's kind of stayed that way. So when they got beat by Hull, there's a little bit of surprise. They got beat off Leeds after taking the lead 1 0 from Naki Wells. Leeds beat them 2 1. And then, of course, Blackburn beat them as well away 1 0. And, of course, at the league table, well, QPR are on uh, 28 points and sit 14th. They've won eight games all season, drawn four, and lost nine. So they've actually lost more than they've won and drawn. And that, again, is not a great thing to look at. As for the butter, well, We've sort of slipped down the table last last few weeks, and we've only got ourselves to blame, I believe. You know, you, you know what I mean. Already this season, I think we were looking at this league table and saying, well, you know what I mean. That should have been three points, or but it should have got something out of that game. And I think it's already happening. And after Christmas, we have to kick on. We have to put these results right. We're sixth, 
and it's on, on obviously brought on 36 points, won nine this season, draw nine and lost three. Not bad in terms of obviously inside, you know what I mean, uh, lost three games and drew nine games. The draws, yeah, okay, they're not great, but again, at least it doesn't say nine defeats on it, which is obviously a good thing. And winning nine games a season, not too bad at all. You know, it's our last trip to uh, London, and of course, then next week after that, we have to go to Reading. But you know, in our last trip to the city, our last trip to the capital, let's try and make it three points. Do you know what I mean? It's QPR, one win in the last five. The butter, you know, recent form might be a little bit better than theirs in some respects, but I just feel like tomorrow, butter can give these a game, and butter can go there, and butter can get the three points. It just depends on what butter turns up, and that's the bit that frustrates me that butter can beat teams. Rob from United at home is a perfect example. We should have beat them, we could have beat them, and we drew with them. Let's not do this to QPR. I know this, I'm not taking nothing away from QPR, I'm not trying to disrespect them at all. I said it before, the ability and the strength and depth in Borough's side is massive. And we can beat any team on our day, we really can. QPR tomorrow, one win in the last five, they came to Brentford at home. You know, and at home, they do concede a lot of goals. I believe this game is for the taking for Borough tomorrow, I really do, and I think Borough can win this game, I do. Um, in terms of top goal scorers for them, well, their top goal scorers actually the man that Borough were looking at in the summer, Luke Freeman, who's on five goals, one assist. Second, high goal, second highest goal scorer is a man that I rate very highly. He's bounced around a couple of clubs inside the championship, and that is Naki Wells on four goals and two assists. And then, of course, you've got another guy who his name is mental. It's something like Zolek or Zolek or something. He's on four goals and one assist. So not bad, not bad goals, but obviously Luke Freeman... There's already rumours going around that Middlesbrough might want to try and sign him in January. Will they be true? We don't know. You know what I mean? We have to wait for AJT's transfer stories to come back out in January and then see what happens from there. As for the Butter, well, of course, he's on six goals now, and that is Britt Asom Balonga. He's been on five goals for a couple of weeks now, but he's actually made it six. And then, of course, John Hugill, four goals and one assist, and Martin Braithwaite, who's on three goals. Of course, like the same on the last time we played these, I was actually in Florida and I missed the game. And uh, yeah, Butter won 3 0. It was a fantastic away day. And I missed the George French Screamer from the edge of the box. But yeah, Butter didn't 3 0. It was a brilliant, 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 brilliant performance when the boys had day. And of course, the old man, a damn sure hour, has got his first half a goal for Butter that afternoon as well. In turn of my 11, I've changed up. I'm going with a 4 4 2 with a diamond in the midfield because I just feel like we can use that number 10 behind the two strikers. And it, you know what I mean? Just a little bit of link up play between the strikers and the number 10. It might help us. This is what I've gone for. Obviously, Dan Randolph, Gordon Goal. The pack four is the following of Ryan Shotton, Daniel Ayala, Aidan Flint and George Friend. As much as what I want to see, Danny back coming for Daniel Ayala, I don't think we're going to see it. You know, purely likes Ayala and that's the way it goes. So, in front of them is Adam Clayton. On the right is Stuart Downing. On the left is actually Tav. And in the number 10, I'm going to pick Martin Braithwaite with ahead of him, John Hugill and Brick Asombalonga. I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's a bad 11. I think using that number 10 in Martin Braithwaite, and then of course you've got Jordan Hugill and Brett Zombalonga. If them two can link up on Saturday and make something work along with Martin Braithwaite, we could, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, it could be a real treat for the Butter fans. So it's one of them. My score bridging for this game, I'm going to go for a 3 1 Middlesbrough. I really think Butter can take this game to QPR. I feel like we can win the game. I don't see a problem with it, that's the thing. I'm looking at QPR and thinking they don't pose a real threat to us. And our strength and depth in our team, the ability we have in our team, it, you know what I mean? But, 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 but for me, it should be just walk through this team. So we'll wait and see what happens. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. Because like I say, you know what I mean? This season, I've got a few scores, right? But yeah, I'm going to go Butter 3 1. Let me know your score predictions down below in the comment section. Like, share, and comment on this video. And I'll see you guys again for the Master Day Vlog tomorrow down at Loftus Road. See you, to the Butter fans. And up the Butter.